full self uh, you know full self driving uh, I think that's going to be something that's going to have to be an add on service uh, you think it should be included I don't think it should even exist I, I don't I look at well, the highways I look at the highways I look at the infrastructure in this country and I know I'm not alone in this in no way it is set up to get hop in a Tesla or any car for that matter and drive with no hands. Elon Musk uh, tweeted out that he uh, first he tweeted out a poll asking if he wanted to uh, people wanted him to offer general amnesty to accounts that had been suspended. And after the the polling results, he said that that's what he's going to do. In this video, haters gonna hate and analysts gonna analyst. A Yahoo Finance anchor is mad at Tesla's epic milestone of FSD beta wide release in North America. Elon Musk will reinstate wrongly suspended Twitter accounts, which is sure to twist a lot of panties. And Morgan Stanley publishes a new research note on Tesla, essentially suggesting that investors by the fucking dip. And a quick heads up to my Patreon supporters, I have discovered an epic sleep hack in the last couple of weeks. I mean, seriously, I've increased my deep sleep 44% with this one change. So if you remember, watch the latest video, could be a game changer, especially if you struggle with sleep. And for those who aren't members on Patreon, just in case you're unaware, the kind of content I post over there, some more in-depth stuff on Tesla, it's probably 10 or 15% of the content. The rest, however, other things that I find useful, important, shit that'll get me canceled if I say it here out loud on YouTube, and a lot of stuff around biohacking. You may have noticed I've been producing an insane amount of content over the last 12 or so months. I wonder why that is. Could it be possible that my biohacking has successfully allowed me to improve my sleep, increase my energy, and therefore my productive output. Spoiler alert, yes. So if you want some tips and tricks about how to win at life a little bit more than you currently are, head over to Patreon. I don't think you'll be disappointed. The opening mile of Wall Street is a few minutes away, but first, a few hot tickers on the Yahoo Finance platform. We're watching shares of Tesla. This ticker has been hot, really, on our platform the past five days. Uh, this time, following an announcement from Elon Musk that its full self-driving beta software is available to anyone in North America who requests it. And Jared, this is not a cheap option. This is a $15,000 option all on a car that is already approaching uh, six digits, six figures, if you go that route. Approaching six figures? Hang on a minute, let me just do some math here, okay? So Model 3, entry level 46,990, not including savings. Let's go forward a little bit here, skip ahead, add the full self-driving capability. Let's see, grand total, $61,990. Hey, Brian, how big's your pork sword? Oh, it's approaching 12 inches. In Brian's defense, maybe he's thinking about a Model S Plaid or something, but approaching six figures when with the $15,000 package, you're around $62,000 US dollars, maybe slightly higher trim, you might be in the mid 60,000s, maybe 70,000 or so. I think that's a fairly generous way of interpreting the pricing on these vehicles, after all. You imagine somebody that's earning $62,000 a year. Hey, how much do you earn? Oh, approaching $100,000. Yeah, <laughs> do you like me now? Even the performance version of the Model 3 with the $15,000 software package, not even $80,000. I think it's a pretty extreme interpretation of the pricing of these vehicles. Now, don't get me wrong, to Brian's point about the $15,000 price itself for the software, that is a significant chunk of change. But it seems to me like Brian has this idea in his head that Teslas are far less affordable than they currently are. And don't get me wrong, not everyone can afford a Tesla, far from it. But enough people can afford them that their wait times are still absolutely absurd. But I just wanted to call this out. Seems a little bit misleading to me. Uh, $15,000, that, that, that's the car. You could buy a car uh, for essentially what it costs to drive it no hands on a Tesla. Yeah, it sounds like auto needs to be disrupted here. Um, and it is. I think the, the, new, the new, the model of the future is going to be a sharing model, but we're here today. Um, these options are really interesting. Um, you know. Can you make an entire car as a service? I think you can. You can make those heated seats a service in the in no, the field. you're not in that camp. All no, the cars I'm not promoting it. I'm I'm a I'm a reader of trends here. This is this is what's happening. I mean, okay, albeit if you get enough pushback from consumers, maybe it doesn't happen. BMW felt a lot of heat from that, but full self uh, you know, full self driving. Uh, I think that's going to be something that's going to have to be an add on service. Uh, you think it should be included? I don't think it should even exist. So if we walk through the apparent logic of this statement. My impression is that Brian, whether he knows it or not, has actually just stated that he believes the millions of people who this technology could actually save also shouldn't exist. It'd be much better if this life-saving technology isn't deployed, improved, and widely available for people in the future. Because after all, it's not like people are really shit driving vehicles, which is exactly why we don't have over a million deaths as a result of road accidents every single year globally. I don't. I look at well, the highways. I look at the highways. I look at the infrastructure in this country, and I know I'm not alone in this. In no way it is set up to get hop in a Tesla or any car for that matter and drive with no hands. Well, it's just well not. based on the ads that I'm still being served on Twitter, I do not trust AI just yet. I know that's an apples to oranges comparison. Uh, in all seriousness, we're several years away from that, so I'm not advocating that just yet. But for people who want to try it out, 
uh, in limited circumstances on those country roads or in shopping malls. I don't know how it's set up. Maybe there are some, maybe test sites in Nevada where you have those nuclear uh, warnings. <laughs> Is it safe? I would pay $15,000 in a month to, you know, to create okay. my own obstacle course, you know, if I had unlimited funds, you know, I'm just, I'm just speaking off the cuff here. And, and, you know, Tesla shares, they have been coming back, which is somewhat surprising, you know, given all the chaos that's happening in Twitter. But like we talked about at the top of the show, uh, you know, they are making cars in China, of course. Now, if Apple is going to be impacted by lockdowns in China, you best believe we might hear from Tesla before they will report their next earnings report, telling the street about the impact from lockdowns China is likely to uh, just employ in the coming weeks. Yeah, so on that whole plague zero policy in China, you guys remember, I don't know, about a year ago when this was announced, I said futile and fascist and really underscored the futile part. Here we are, about a year later, this idiotic, insane, futile fascist policy has proven to be futile and the CCP is doubling down, attempting to single-handedly destroy the Chinese economy, portions of the global economy, the trust of its citizens, and eroding the very last shreds of freedom anyone in China actually had. I do not know what the f these f***ing idiots are doing. I just literally do not understand. Again, this is futile and it's fascist. Hello CCP, are you listening? Well, obviously not. I just can't believe what's going on here. And I can't stay quiet about this either. If you guys haven't seen what the f*** is going on, it is insane. People are getting locked in apartment buildings. There's drones flying around. This is some black mirror sh The fallout and the damage that these lockdowns will cause, directly and indirectly, is far in excess of any potential results of this plague infecting a few more people. This insanity still remains one of the largest short-term risks to Tesla China. If their factory is forcibly shut down, if their employees can't get to work, if their employees are forced to stay on site or lose their jobs, there could definitely be some further bumps in the road. And again, I still cannot f***ing believe what is happening here. It's insane. We're watching a literal episode of Black Mirror unfold in real time. Yeah, that's a huge thing. I'm By the way, I'm, I'm annotating on the Wi-Fi interactive as I talk here. Tesla is at a huge level. You can see this prior resistance from uh, early, actually late 2021, now acting as support. This is a huge huge distribution top. So, well, I should say it's too early to call it a top, but if price were to sink below the current price, let's say 175 below that, um, could be in for a Tesla winter here. Uh, we talk about, no, I, I like it. I'm just talking, I like it. I'm just talking technicals here uh, without regard to anything they're doing in the fundamentals of the business. This is a, a dangerous looking chart. A lot of charts look like this. By the way, the chart for crude oil also has this huge top on. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, with respect to China, you were talking about how Tesla is leveraged to China, so are a lot of other company, companies, especially Apple. We saw the demonstrations with Foxconn. It's going to be very difficult for China, the way relations have been frosty with the U.S., mm -hmm. to be able to dial that down. There's huge cooperation, huge interest there, and any kind of breakup over the long term, I'm talking super long term, going to be super messy. All right, that's enough. That is, did you guys see what that disgusting man just drew on the screen right there? Disgusting. He's talking about really big and then it's going to be messy. I mean, come on. That's just it's so inappropriate and childish. And if you listen to audio only, well, too fucking bad. Unbelievable. The guy's just, I just, what is he got the humor of a 12 year old? Twitter is going to start granting amnesty to suspended accounts, according to Elon Musk. For more on changes at the social media company, let's bring in Yahoo Finance tech editor Dan Howley. Dan, the latest with this. Elon Musk uh, tweeted out that he, uh, first he tweeted out a poll asking if he wanted to, uh, people wanted, him to offer general amnesty to accounts that had been suspended. And after the, the polling results, he said that that's what he's going to do. Uh, so essentially what this means is anybody that has their account suspended and hasn't broken any law uh, will see their accounts reinstated. Now, obviously, this means that uh, there's going to be a chance of increased uh, vitriol, uh, racism, anti-Semitism, things along those lines that you might see online. I just want to add some important context, given the way this is being reported. Oh, terrible things are going to happen now. All these bad people are back. Racist, bigots, this, that, and the other. Let's see what actually happened, and let's try to understand what has happened in the past. For those of you that have your eyes closed, still living in la-la land and completely naive to the way the world, in particular Twitter, works, many, if not the majority of accounts previously suspended on Twitter, weren't suspended because of anything to do with racism, sexism, any of the other isms or ists or obias or any of that shit. Instead, it has been due to the woke ideology, the woke mind virus infected employees working at Twitter. Oh, that opinion. Let's ban this person. That's basically the decision-making process. I'm not kidding. Of course, you'll say tinfoil hat shit, Stephen. Shut the fuck up. Just talk about Tesla. No. See, the thing is, you guys recall I started this YouTube channel trying to point out the difference between what people perceive to be the reality of Tesla and the actual reality. 
Some people got it. Some people said you're a fucking idiot. Next minute, Tesla goes up 20x. Guess what? This is round two. Trying to tell people the way the world works, the way Twitter has been working versus the way people perceive Twitter to have been working. There's a big disconnect. Let's read this interesting post here. Following Elon's poll in which almost three quarters of respondents said people should be granted amnesty if their account was suspended for any reason other than having broken the law or engaging in egregious spam, most people want these accounts back, at least temporarily. So let's read some of the discussion here. Quote, well, whatever it decides to do, Twitter should be clear and consistent about its rules and penalties for breaking them. Enforcement should be unbiased and the mechanisms of enforcement shouldn't be easily abused by people who have an agenda. What a great fucking tweet. Prior to now, Twitter wasn't clear or consistent about its rules or penalties for breaking them. Enforcement was extremely biased and the mechanisms of enforcement were easily abused by work mind virus infected morons with an agenda. And I know many people watching will be unwilling to accept this reality. Just like there were people previously who were unwilling to accept the fact that the earth actually orbited around the sun, not the sun around the earth. You do you. Elon responded to this. The more I learn, the worse it gets. The world should know the truth of what has been happening at Twitter. Transparency will earn the trust of the people. Someone responds. I heard from a primary source that political groups would regularly contact Twitter to de-boost their candidates' detractors, and Twitter would happily do that. That seems to put the finger on the scales of democracy. Elon responding to this, once again, with something that some people refuse to accept, even though it is an accurate portrayal of reality. Quote, It is objectively the case that conservative political candidates were more negatively affected than progressive candidates. Anyone using Twitter knows this at least if their brain works. Question is simply one of magnitude. So just to recap, given the fact that Twitter has clearly had their very heavy fingers on the scale for years, given the woke agenda of most of Twitter's employees, the clear bias in terms of bans, suspensions, shadow bans, deboosting, and so on, Elon's plan here is to restore trust in Twitter by granting amnesty to everyone who was suspended previously. So we start the clean slate and go from there. Now, if you break the law or you spam incessantly, you're going to get kicked the fuck off the platform as you should. But prior to now, Twitter was booting people off the platform just because they didn't like what they heard. Some people will be unwilling to accept this fact and that's fine. You can tell me the earth's flat as well. You can believe whatever you want. I'm just here to tell you the facts. This is the best solution to undo some of the damage and give everybody a fair opportunity. Previously, Twitter was anything but fair. Uh, from accounts that were previously suspended for things uh, such as that. So, you know, this is going to be a, a big change at Twitter at a time where, you know, Elon Musk is flip-flopping on what he previously said he would do. He, uh, prior to this, said that there would be no kind of decisions made on uh, moderation uh, until after he sets up a moderation council uh, and they're able to kind of oversee what the company's plans would be for monitoring uh, and moderating the speech on the platform. And so uh, he's kind of throwing that all out the window and saying, let's just let everybody back in and have a big old party. Uh, you know, this also means that advertisers are likely to be even more hesitant to rejoin uh, the service just because he's now kind of throwing this all into chaos. Uh, and so, you know, it doesn't seem as though there's one particular plan at this point. Um, you, you can't imagine that advertisers are gonna be happy with this kind of move. Hey, Dan, uh, myself and Jared are, are global celebrities with blue check marks. Are we losing those next week? Uh, no. So what's going to be happening is there's going to be a few different check marks, uh, according to Musk. Uh, now there's going to be uh, regular blue check marks uh, for everyone. There'll be, uh, I believe, orange check marks uh, for others. Um, and uh, those would be things along the lines of, uh, say, uh, organizations. Uh, and then there's going to be um, another kind of gray check mark. So, you know, there's, there's going to be uh, this kind of three check mark system uh, that could get confusing for a lot of people. You know, Twitter is, you know, opaque, to say the least, for early users. Um, obviously, he's touting that there's been uh, an uptick in users since he's taken over. Um, you, you have to wonder what that means for those users then if they're going to see this platform and all these different check marks uh, and then all these changes happening uh, all at once. Thanks for easing our concerns. Dan Halley, appreciate it. The multiple checkmark system seems like the best solution. I can't think of a better one. Checkmark for official accounts of official brands and organizations, e.g. the official Twitter account, the official Nintendo account, and so on. A separate, distinct verification checkmark for official government officials. Again, makes sense. And a third tier of checkmark for insecure celebrities who want to show they're better than you, who've now been downgraded to the same checkmark as the plebs who pay the $8 a month to get themselves verified. No more status signaling for insecure people. How unfortunate. I think this makes a lot of sense. If anyone has any better ideas, leave them in the comments below, or better yet, tweet them at Elon. But now a new research note from Morgan Stanley. Tesla sheds half a trillion dollars of market cap in two months. Stock rating? Overweight. 
price target $330 per share, significantly above where we are now. In fact, close to double Tesla's current price. And this is from the same mob who not long ago, and I mean like three, four years ago, had a split adjusted price target for Tesla stock in their bear case, their worst case scenario of 67 cents per share, which in my opinion was never a serious price target. It was just a way to get in the media. Round of applause. It's interesting. Some people are willing to self-immolate, make a moron out of themselves just to get attention. I could name a dozen YouTubers right now who do this every fucking day. Just observing, it's pathetic, but it works. Speaking of pathetic, actually, before we get too much further, I just have to point this out. Every single time I look at these EPS estimates from Moron Stanley, I think that I'm so dumb, I just don't understand what I'm reading. For 2023, they have $4.08 of EPS for the full fucking year. It's gonna be about double this amount or more. And in 2024, not even 550. Again, it's gonna be so much beyond this point that I just don't, I, I look at this and I go, okay, th maybe this is quarterly EPS. <laughs> maybe they're halving, maybe it's half year EPS. I just don't get it. Please somebody remind me in a couple of years time to revisit these things. I mean, I just, what planet are these people on? And how high are they? PS, can I please have some? Anyway, that being said, even with these absurdly low EPS estimates in the future, they still have a $330 price target on Tesla stock. If these EPS estimates are in line with reality, rather than embarrassingly below the mark, there's a very high probability this price target will be closer to say 550, in my opinion. And again, it's just based on pretty simple math. EPS is gonna be around double this number in 23 and way, way, way beyond double, probably triple or more in 24. Factor that in, the price target should be easily well above where it is today. Tesla is approaching our $150 bear case, driven by price cuts in China, decelerating. <laughs> Can we just, these are actual words written in an actual research report from actual Morgan Stanley. Hence why I often refer to these folks as moron Stanley. Decelerating EV demand, okay, and other market currents. A value opportunity emerging, question mark? I'll answer that one. Yes, continued weakness in Tesla shares has brought the stock to a two year low, back to levels near when the company joined the S&P 500. Current valuation at under $170 a share puts the company at approximately 14 times 2025 EV EBITDA and 26 times PE. And again, this is based on massively low estimates, meaning the multiple's even lower. Our top line forecast CAGR, compound annual growth rate, through 2030 is 25% for units and 23% revenue, which is far below the company's 50% target. Yeah, it's basically half. Remains higher than most other names under our coverage. What's implied in our $150 bear case? We value the core auto business at $99 a share, $3 a share for Tesla Energy, $11 a share for mobility, and $37 a share for network services based on 10 million monthly active users at $50 a month, average revenue per user by 2030. Now this is important. Morgan Stanley, one of the few lots on Wall Street who are actually talking about this in terms of average revenue per user, total install base, etc. My personal estimate, give or take around end of decade, Tesla's global fleet will be around 100 million vehicles. That is a shitload of potential customers for monthly services, for additional revenue and so on. So this is important. It's good to see it's in their model. And I also think they're massively underestimating the size of the user base. But hey, it's a start. In 2023, we expect Tesla to experience 37% top line growth, delivering 1.8 million units. Spoiler alert, way below the mark. Let's see how this ages. With approximately $15 billion of free cash flow generation. For the record in my Tesla valuation model, base case, I've got Tesla over 20 billion dollars, significantly over 20 billion dollars, just for the record. Of course, I'm just some idiot on YouTube and these are the 420 IQ geniuses, so I'll obviously be wrong. All other pure EV OEMs we cover burn substantial amounts of cash on our forecasts. Feedback from last week's Asia Summit in Singapore suggests investor sentiment has turned sharply negative on the global EV market. I mean, <laughs> just imagine this is a century ago and investor sentiment is sharply turned negative on adoption of these strange automobiles which some idiots think we're gonna disrupt the horse and carriage. Growth in the supply of EVs appears to be surpassing growth in demand for EVs into a decelerating global economy. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Global battery supply growth is on pace to nearly double to 1.2 terawatt hours, up from less than 700 gigawatt hours the year prior. According to a report by Moron Stanley Auto Semiconductor Analyst Charlie Chan, TSMC's auto semi wafer output, as in chips required for vehicles, in Q3 2022 was up 82% year over year and 140% higher than pre scamdemic levels. Did I say scamdemic? I don't mean that. The plague was real, the response was a scam. Deal with it. Bitches. Suggesting supplier might have caught up with demand. And according to a China auto analyst, China's EV sell through seems to be weakening. A sales growth is expected to decelerate to approximately plus 15% in 2023 versus 70% in 2022. What needs to change for Tesla's stock to stop the slide? As we highlighted in last week's note, 
We see the situation at Twitter potentially exposing Tesla to risk along a number of areas, including consumer sentiment and demand, B, commercial partnerships, C, government relations and support, and D, capital market support. While difficult to quantify, we believe there must be some form of sentiment circuit break around the Twitter situation to calm investor concerns around Tesla. Non-Tesla auto sector implications. Where will the EV consumer go? And where has all the market cap gone? Well, at a very different part of the risk reward spectrum, we believe overweight rated Rivian could emerge as a short term beneficiary of any potential commercial disruption eroding customer loyalty at Tesla. In addition, Investors can consider where the nearly $500 billion of lost market cap is being reallocated. Even if 10% of the unwinding of the Tesla trade was reallocated into other auto stocks, this could have material sector flow implications. Now, this is a fair point. Why do we still recommend Tesla? Tesla is the only name we cover that generates a profit on the sale of EVs. Tesla is the only self-funding pure play EV name we cover and has achieved a unique position to secure supply of the necessary battery materials and related upstream supply necessary to produce EVs at multi-million unit scale. By the way, these are some seriously important points. In a slowing economic environment, we believe Tesla's gap to competition can potentially widen. What a great point, completely agree. Particularly as EV prices pivot from inflationary to deflationary. With respect to the IRA, the inflation Induction Act. We believe Tesla is by far the best positioned OEM in terms of potential eligibility for consumer tax credits, up to 7,500 US dollars per unit, and for Section 45 production credits, up to $45 per kilowatt hour in terms of battery production. The current price offers approximately 100% potential upside to our $330 price target, aka Morgan Stanley's base case price target, expecting Tesla stock to approximately double in the next 12 months. And this is based on their absurdly low EPS estimates and absurdly low production estimates and absurdly low everything estimates, which is the highest upside to target we have seen from Tesla in over five years. EV OEM 2023 estimated free cash flow. Tesla about 15 billion. Fista, hmm, I think I mispronounced that. Bleeding about a billion dollars. Lucid Motors. Losing over 2.5 billion. And Rivian bleeding about $5 billion. Ramping successfully to high volume production of compelling vehicles people actually want to buy and turning cash flow positive? No easy task. I thought it was worth looking through these. We've got some valuation methodology and risks for both Tesla and Rivian. Let's start with Rivian. I'll read through this fairly quickly, just some of the key highlights. How Morgan Stanley get to their $55 price target on Rivian. Automotive, $40 a share, assumes 814,000 units in 2030. Take a step back, ladies and gentlemen. No, seriously, take a step back. Morgan Stanley expecting Rivian to produce less than a million units in 2030. Can anyone remind me how many units Tesla is likely to produce in 2030? I've kind of forgotten. I think it started with a 20 and ended in a million, but I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Anyway, software and services, $15 a share, a fleet of 2.7 million in 2030. And how many in my fleet for Tesla 2030 roughly? Oh, that's right, 100 million. Just putting that out there. Now let's have a quick squiz at Tesla. Our price target of $330 per share for Tesla stock is comprised of six components. One, $183 a share for the core Tesla automotive business. Business. Oh, f I can never read this with a straight face. Based on 7.7 .7 million units in 2030. Again, this is why I call them Moron Stanley. This is absurd. No, embarrassingly low. 9% weighted average cost of capital, 15 times 2030 exit EBITDA multiple, exit EBITDA margin of 20.9%. Two, Tesla mobility at $21, aka robo taxis, hail on demand, etc., with around half a million cars at $1.70 per mile by 2030. Now, for the record, I personally expect Tesla's robo taxi fleet in 2030 to be mm, slightly more than half a million vehicles, and that's putting it lightly. If you want to see exactly how many, check out my Tesla valuation model on Patreon at the investor level and above. Tesla as a third party supplier, probably of batteries, at $27 a share. Tesla Energy at $33 a share. Tesla Insurance at $8 a share. Network services, on a piddly 25 million monthly active users. Again, I've got a fleet of over 100 million. They're at 25 million. $100 average revenue per user by 2030, 20% discount. If you guys want to pause and look at the risks to the upside and downside, feel free. That awkward moment when Morgan Stanley, with extremely bearish assumptions, are still banging the drum going, oh, hey guys, Tesla stock's so cheap now, it's basically a value play price target, approximately double where it is today based on absurdly low assumptions. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. And don't forget, want to learn about my latest sleep hack, absolute game changer, plus loads of other content, a little bit of Tesla and a lot of other stuff that matters even more. You can join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. I'll see you over there. Love ya.